Hello, this is Thekla Petridou, a YouTuber, psychologist and author, and this is our weekly video in English. Today's subject is a question that bothers most of us. Is it okay to be a perfectionist? A viewer of our videos sent uh, this question to me and asked me to talk about perfectionism and whether it's a good trait or a bad trait and whether it affects our life in a positive way or in a negative way. Thank you very much for the question because it's a, a topic that has too much relevance and for myself and for other people as well. What is perfectionism? Perfectionism is to aim high, to want to make the perfect deeds, the perfect actions, to say the perfect words, to be a perfect person that makes no mistakes and uh, feeling consequently pressurized from inside in order to work hard, to achieve more than is expected from you or more than is, um, um, is uh, relatable to your position and you are the piece of time that you're trying to do something and striving always to become better and better and better, not better, to become the best at everything writing the best essay, making the best video, making the best dress if you are a dressmaker, writing the best novel, doing the best of everything. Perfectionism, according to my opinion and my personal experience, as well as my clinical experience, is a trait that we can use against us, that it can be used against us quite commonly. I do believe that people are born with a set of traits that are genetically inherited. Some people are born and are, um, uh, they have an internal um, uh, motion to strive for perfection. And if you look at their family tree, you'll see that maybe they had a grandmother, a grandfather, a great grandfather, somebody or even a parent, somebody in their family tree that are also perfectionists. Being a perfectionist, is a, is a personality trait. Uh, you cannot make somebody become a perfectionist unless they are pre genetically predisposed to be. So all of you watching the video who have never uh, found yourself uh, in a position where you realize that your perfectionism drives you uh, wore, wore down or even worse drives you crazy, you don't have to worry. If you're not built up to be a, perfe a perfectionist, you cannot be. For the majority of people that we have this uh, personality trait, which um, I, should, uh, I should say that it is usually um, um, found together with other, um, other personality traits like anxiety, a tendency for depression, a tendency for obsessive compulsive behavior or thoughts, all those things usually go together. That's why I emphasize on the genetic factor, uh, because you cannot pressurize a child or an adult in order to become a perfectionist, but you really can and you shouldn't pressurize somebody who has a tendency to become a perfectionist to become even more of a perfectionist. Being a perfectionist makes your life difficult because you have frustration on a daily basis. Nobody, nobody, absolutely nobody can be perfect. Nobody can make the perfect food. Nobody can make, make the perfect video. Nobody can make the, the perfect, nobody can write the perfect book. Nobody can be, ca can be perfect on any aspect of life. It is only human that the things we do, the things we create or the stuff we are involved in are less than perfect, which is not a bad thing. It's not a bad thing not being able to be perfect because I really do believe that um, interesting lives are much less than perfect lives. Were we able to live be uh, perfect lives, we would resemble too much of that film, The, Sper the Stepford Wives. I'm sure you, you are aware of that film, which shows the dystopian society that women are so perfect because they are robots. Uh, it's not a bad thing that we are not able, none of us, none of us 
are able to be perfect or make the perfect deeds or make the perfect actions or create the, the perfect creatures. It's impossible. It's impossible. But yet we have this internal drive in order to try and try and try and try to become perfect and to feel um, disappointed, disheartened, depressed, or even um, questioning the meaning of life when we realize that we cannot be perfect. Because it's not a matter that some people can be perfect and some people can't. It's a realization that nobody can be perfect. If you are young enough and maybe you watch this video, you might say, oh, she's an old lady, she's a middle-aged lady, and she didn't ma manage money much in her life. So she says that nobody can be perfect than me, that I'm young, that I'm 15 years old, that I'm 16 years old, that I'm 20 years old. I will be able to become perfect because I have the strength and the will to do so. You will remember me. Not that your life will not be interesting or your life will not be fruitful if you are less than perfect, but you will save yourself for a lot of negative emotions and negative self-evaluation if you realize this universal truth that nobody can be perfect. I read um, a, few, a few articles, a few scientific articles on the matter of uh, perfectionism. Some of them to call perfectionism, per perfectionism in teenagers and young adults as toxic perfectionism. And there are some correlating studies, some studies that correlate perfectionism with higher rates of depression, higher rates of suicide attempts, and generally uh, make a connection between perfectionism and poor mental or even physical health. Um, there are three types of perfectionism. The first type is self-perfectionism. I try hard so that I am perfect. It's focused on myself, it's focused on my activities, it's focused on my person. Me, who I'm this person, I want to become the perfect version of myself. This is the most common, uh, the most common uh, version of perfectionism. People pressurizing themselves again and again and again on a daily basis to become perfect. People feeling inadequate in, in, in a, very often when they realize that they didn't manage to make the task per perfect or the other tasks per perfect, and people evaluating themselves in very low scores, self-disappointment, and they might even become self-destructive. Self-perfectionism is easier to address through therapy. I know that I, I, I constantly talk about therapy, even though I'm not a practicing therapist anymore, but I strongly believe that psychotherapy can help a person to get free of perfectionism um, uh, pressures that herself uh, subjects herself in. The second type of per perfectionism is when we try to make everybody else perfect. We nag about our partner, we nag about our child, we nag about our parents, we nag about our co-workers. We want everybody around us to be perfect. And in order to make them be, be perfect, we pressurize them. We exercise psychological pressure on them. Or even they might, they might say that, they, that might be truthful, that we exercise psychological abuse on them in order to be perfect. This is rather more difficult to address because it has more to do with the controlling nature. Perfectionists that are self-perfectionists, they try to control themselves. People who want others around them to be perfect, they try to control others. And there is, this is a very dark um, uh, and gray area of uh, our, uh, our brain and our psyche when we want to control other people and we want to affect other people's lives and when we abuse other people's freedom, other people's freedom. We should, I know that therapy will help in that case only, only if we realize that we are being this person that do not allow, do not allow to people around them to be themselves and they just want to criticize them all the time and try to make them better and trying to make them work harder and, you know, just giving them a huge headache and giving them a, a negative uh, feedback about them, themselves. 
and it's really, really, really very distressing when a parent is a perfectionist that tries to make their 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 um, children perfect, perfect, and perfectionist perfectionists who are parents and they pressurize their children are really, really in a very bad position. I mean, their children are in a very bad position. They are, they are committing a crime against their children. We should liberate our children from our own controlling and perfectionistic nature. We should try hard to do it. And therapy can also um, give us the tools in order to be able to let our children free, to let them live, to let them breathe, to let them be. And the third type of perfectionism is when somebody feels the pressure from the society, from their teachers or their peers to be, to be, to be perfect, social perfectionism. We live in Western societies where thriving uh, socially, economically, financially um, in our workplace is, uh, is uh, very much um, uh, emphasized and, and children are brought up with these images in their mind that you should finish school, you should go to the university, you should get a master's degree. Nowadays, people, uh, children are even pressurized to get a PhD degree. You should get the perfect job, you should make the perfect marriage, you should be a law-abiding citizen, you should become successful, you should become uh, rich, you should become socially respectful. And it's a very, it's a very uh, difficult situation because uh, children, and, and especially uh, pre-teenagers and teenagers and young adults, they get affected too much by pop culture, by what their uh, peers tell them or insinuate, it, insinuate on themselves. And in this case, we need to make a social reform to try as a society to spare our children from the uh, too much ha uh, burden of perfectionism. I'm not against working hard. I'm pro work. I'm pro working hard. I really do believe that successful successful people work hard in order to become successful, really successful people. But what's the problem with perfectionism? The pro the problem with perfectionism is that. The perfectionist thinks that it's easy to achieve a difficult goal, but it's not. It's hard to achieve a difficult goal. You need to work hard for a long period of time, make mistakes, learn from your mistakes, be down, then rise up, be da beat down again by life, then rise up, and it's an ongoing procedure. Perfectionists uh, have this fallacy in their mind that if I try hard for one day, I will achieve something that it takes years of work. No. By saying that as a society, we should uh, protect our children from perfectionism, I don't mean making them lazy or um, easygoing, uh, not easygoing, or um, somebody who, who wants to have um, a gain without working hard. On the contrary, diminishing perfectionism allows people to focus on their goals and work hard for their goals without judging themselves harshly when they have a difficulty. Because any big goal, such as finishing school, finishing the uni, finishing your academic career, um, achieving at your job, achieving on your personal life, achieving on your family life, it takes a lot of time effort and continuance in order to achieve. So perfectionists usually, very often, they get frustrated, they get ashamed, they feel bad about themselves, and they stop trying. So what do we want? What do we wish ourselves or other people around us to get frustrated all the time and feeling ashamed of themselves and bad about themselves and stop trying? Or people who know that only hard works and continue hard work and continuous hard work brings uh, results and are and they feel free to work on a daily basis to work on their cause and spare themselves uh, the the bad mouthing that today you did not make it you're not good you're not perfect you're not good enough 
these, these are my thoughts on perfectionism. Um, uh, it's a difficult trait. Um, perfectionism in the three forms that I described, being perfect, uh, um, demanding perfection from yourself, demanding perfection from others, or feeling pressurized to, to deliver perfection from society are um, all around us. And uh, people who have this uh, trait, this personality trait, it's a, it's a lovely idea to try to, to manage this personality train, uh, trait and, um, and put their energy in trying uh, uh, effort, trying uh, focused for a lo for longer period of time. And nobody, nobody has become successful unless they worked hard and for a prolonged uh, prolonged uh, period of time and being su successful means trying every day, working every day, either your hands with your brain or with your spirit, you might have, um, you might do spiritual work as well. And it is not important to be perfect. What's, th what's the most beautiful thing about striving for greatness is the journey. It's the journey which you cannot enjoy if you beat yourself on a daily basis because you are not perfect yet. I wish all of you to have a nice weekend. Talk to you next Friday. Bye.